wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, what wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, what wondrous love is this, that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate Laetare Sunday, which means rejoice, because we're that much closer to Easter and the festivities of Holy Week, the Paschal Mysteries. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we recall that we are loved immensely, but we are also love sinners and we need to admit our sinfulness and ask God for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to God and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. 
All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there our captives asked us, the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let, Let my tongue be silenced, silenced if, if I, I ever, ever forget, forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forgot you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let, Let my, my tongue be silenced, silenced if I, I ever, ever forget, forget you. you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let, Let my tongue, tongue be silenced if, if I, I ever forget, forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us, in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works must be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This verse, as you know, is an allusion to an Old Testament story where the Israelites were in the desert for 40 years and they started moaning and complaining and doubting God's care and love for them. They were grumblers and moaners. So God sent these serpents, these snakes, to bite them. And we too are smitten or bitten by sin. Serpents are symbols of sin and of temptation. Now, I don't know about you. I don't like to touch snakes. I don't even like to look at them. But what was the remedy that Moses prescribed for the people who did not die of their bites? He took a serpent and he mounted it on a pole. And he said, look at the very thing that bites you, the thing that you're afraid of, and you will find healing for yourself. So there's a, a comparison being made to that, to that uh, pole be, of, of the serpent being lifted up and Jesus being lifted up. We're invited to look at Jesus on the cross, to see there the love of God for the world. First reading reminds us that God was always sending messengers, trying to reach his people, trying to tell them he loves them and cares for them, and they were rejected. Finally, God sends his son, and it's no different. He too is rejected, and he's nailed to a cross, and we see the love of God on the cross. And we're also called, we're called to bring, uh, to look at that cross, to look at the serpents, if you will, to what are the sins that we're, we're afraid to look at, look, at, look at, to uncover? Where do we hide them in the darkness? We're called to bring those into the light, to come to the light who is Christ. So this Lent, come take a, take a cross, a crucifix in front of you, and contemplate it. What does it tell you about your own sin, but above all, about the love of God? Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our prayers now on behalf of the world, the church, and our own particular needs. 
for the church that we may continue to grow in our relationship with Christ and manifest God's unbounded love for the human family by our deeds of light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For members of the diocese, that God will lead us from the comfort of darkness and selfishness and enable us to live in freedom as children of the light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek to grow in their faith, that Christ will reveal himself more and more to all who are preparing to receive sacraments this spring and help them to live faithfully as children of the light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new bishop for our diocese, that God will send us a kind and loving shepherd to help us continue to grow in the faith and hope and love of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God will touch the sick and return them to wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Bishop Peter Muich, that their faith in Jesus will bring them to the fullness of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we bring our petitions and needs. We ask you to hear them and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray then that our sacrifice might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith that has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Yeah. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, especially where it is being persecuted, where it is divided. Bring her to the fullness of charity, unity, and peace, together with Francis, our Pope, the Bishop of Rome all the bishops, the religious, the clergy, the entire baptized people of God. Remember also our beloved brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially all violence and threats of violence. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as so we wait the blessed hope, second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jerusalem is built as a city bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As you gaze at the cross, what do you see there? Do you see love or condemnation? Light? or darkness, healing or death. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light those who walk in the shadow of darkness and death. Bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to say, as you Satan did contend and did the